G'day guys, my name's Dave Tran and welcome to another Guitar Zero to Hero song tutorial. And by request, today I'll be teaching you how to play There's Nothing Holding Me Back by Shawn Mendes. Now in this tutorial, I'll show you a few different ways you can play this song. I'll show you the studio version, but I'll also show you some easy strumming chords that you can use as well if you're a beginner. Now if you want to master your chords back to front, then be sure to head over to guitarzerotohero.com to pick up my free guitar ebook. So for the basics of this song, you'll just need your guitar and standard tuning and you won't need a capo. So let's start off the intro of the song and there's a really cool riff here. We're going to start with the 3rd fret of the 6th string, we're going to play that with our middle finger. Now with your index finger you're going to have it ready on the 2nd fret of the 4th string because after you've hit the 6th string, you'll pluck that and you'll hammer on with your ring finger to the 4th fret, like that. And then you'll lift your ring finger and go back to the 2nd fret of the 4th string. And all together. Now one thing you'll want to add to this though is palm muting. Now to palm mute, take the fleshy bit of your palm and rest it very lightly on the edge of your bridge. So when you pluck, the notes will still ring out. Now if you go too far in, you won't hear anything. So it's really important that you're right on the edge of the bridge and you get that really cool stripped back feel and together with those notes. So you play that little section twice. And then for our next section, you'll take your index finger and you'll put it on the second fret of the fifth string. And with your ring finger, you'll have it ready here on the fourth fret of the fourth string. And the structure is gonna be pretty much the same. You're gonna pluck this fifth string, which is a bass note, and then you'll pluck the 4th string and with your pinky finger you'll hammer on to the 5th fret and then you'll let that pinky finger go and go back to the 4th string so without palm muting but with palm muting and you do that twice as well and so far we have this And then for our final section, we're going to be using the open 5th string as our bass note and we're going to be hammering on from the 2nd fret of the 4th string to the 4th fret of the 4th string, like this. And then you let go of that ring finger and go back to the 2nd fret. Again, this is all palm muted, so without the palm muting it would sound like this. But with the palm muting... And you've got to play that four times. And all together, the intro should sound like this. If you want to add an extra layer to this intro, you can play a higher lead lick. And you'll do that up here on the ninth fret of the 3rd string and you'll hammer on to the 11th fret. You'll hammer on and then let go of that ring finger and go back to the 9th fret. You'll do that twice and then we go up to the 11th fret with our index and hammer on to the 12th fret with our middle finger and we do that twice and then we go back to our original position and do that four times. And we should palm mute that as well. So that's a little extra thing that you can add to the intro. So now we get to the verse of the song and this is really, really easy. The only difficult part about this, which might confuse some beginners, is the timing of the notes. But I'll try to break it down as clearly as possible. So we're going to start with the 3rd fret of the 6th string. And that's on a 1 beat. And then we're going to go with our index finger, we're going to slide up to the 5th fret of the 5th string. We're going to pluck that. Now that's going to be on the end beat after the 3. And then with our ring finger we hit the 7th fret of the 6th string. And that's on the end beat after the 4. So if I'm counting along it should sound like this. 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3. And then in the next bar when we get to the end beat after the 3 we're going to go back to this 5th fret of the 5th string with our index finger. And then on the end beat after the 4, we go to the 5th fret 
of the sixth string. So we just move that finger up one string. For the third bar, we're doing the exact same thing. So fifth fret of the fifth string on the end beat after the three. And then you just move that up to the fifth fret of the sixth string on the end beat after the four. And then in our final bar, we're just hitting this fifth fret of the fifth string on the end beat after the three, and that's it. So it's very simple. It's just about where you're hitting those notes in terms of the timing. So I'll count along, and the full verse riff should just sound like this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and two and three and four and one 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 and two and three and four Now one thing you can add to that verse riff is palm muting as well if you want to strip it back a little bit more. Now when we play that verse riff just before the chorus, it's going to be a tiny bit of a build up. So that riff is going to change a tiny bit. So in the third bar, when we go one and two and three and four and after this, we're going to start building up. So you're going to play a power chord. Now if you don't know how to play power chords, then just check out my video here on power chords. They're so essential. If you don't know how to play power chords, then playing bar chords is going to be near impossible. So make sure you master power chords. And we're going to start strumming this on the end beat after the one. So from the third bar, it will sound like this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and... And then the chorus is essentially exactly the same as the verse. The structure is exactly the same. The notes are essentially the same, except we're extending those single notes into power chords. So we're going to start with a G power chord like this on the one beat, and then we go to a D power chord like this, and then we go to our B power chord, and that first bar will sound like this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three. Then for the second and third bar, we go D power chord to A power chord. And then in our fourth bar, we just hit this D power chord by itself. So the chorus altogether has the exact same structure. Again, it's just an extension of those bass notes that were in the verse. So the chorus will sound like this. One and two and three and four and 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 now the great thing is that the rest of the song is essentially just made up out of that chorus riff. And you can mix and match the verse and the chorus as you please. You can play single notes in the more quieter parts and then the chorus in the bridge and the more powerful parts, you can use the power chords. So to recap, the main riff and that main structure that's used in the verse and the chorus can just be played throughout the whole song. Once you learn the timing and the chords that need to be played, you can just repeat them over and over it's really, really simple, which is great. And it's also going to get you practicing power chords, which is a really important part of guitar. Now, if you don't want to play power chords for that chorus, you can just use normal open chords as well. And the timing is exactly the same. But the chords we have now will be G, D, B minor, D, A, D, A, D. The timing is exactly the same though, so it should sound like this if you want to use open chords. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and... Now for the beginners out there who want an easy strumming pattern version, then this is how you'll do it. So we'll just have three chords here. We'll have our G. And then we'll have an altered B minor shape here. So to play this, you'll just need your index finger on the second fret of the fifth string, middle finger on the second fret 
of the third string and ring finger on the third fret of the second string like that and you won't hit the sixth string and our third chord is just an A. Now our strumming patterns here up in the annotations and it's fairly long and that's because the chord changes need to be on specific strums. So this is the simplest way of doing it but it still requires some thought on where you're going to change your chords. Down, down, up, down, up, down, up. Up, down, up, down, up, down, up, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Now up here in the annotations you'll see exactly where the chord changes need to be, but basically you'll change from the G to the B minor on the up strum before the little pause. And then the same occurs to these other A's, the up strums before the little pause. And this super super basic version that you can just play throughout the whole song will sound like this. Down, down, up, down, up, down, up, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, up, down, up, down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up, down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up, now I'm going to be playing through the whole song and I'm going to have a vocal track on top for some context. So feel free to play this back as many times as you'd like to, to practice, play along to and see how you go.
Thanks for watching guys, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Be sure to head over to guitarzerotohero.com to pick up my free guitar ebook. If you've enjoyed this then smash that like button, hit that subscribe button and click the notification bell so that you don't miss out on the updates. Please leave your thoughts, comments, questions and requests below and I'll see you guys next time on Guitar Zero to Hero. Cheers.